We Americans are aware of what's happening in Cambodia and South Vietnam because this country has a big stake there. But Bangladesh is a different case. There is no major American involvement or commitment there, nothing which approaches the needs of that young, impoverished nation. And so the memory of what happened there may already be growing dim in many of us. But what did happen there will never be forgotten by the people of Bangladesh. One of the reasons why there is a Bangladesh today is the fact that troops from West Pakistan, Punjabis, savagely terrorized the Bengali population of East Pakistan. Perhaps a million people died. Here now is some blurry videotape taken 10 months ago, hidden since then, of how the terror began. This slightly blurry amateur videotape, which has been kept hidden for the past nine months, shows Pakistani soldiers executing students, professors, and workers at the University of Dhaka last March 26. The first sequence shows Pakistani soldiers forcing students to carry and pile up the bodies of victims already killed. The tape was made secretly by a professor of engineering on a portable tape machine hidden on the roof of a building about 300 yards from the killings. A Pakistani execution squad lined up slightly to the right of the center of the screen. About 20 people were herded onto the killing ground from the right corner of the picture. One man, dressed in black, dropped to his knees and begged for mercy. The Pakistani soldiers opened fire. One man was left standing after the first barrage. He was finally killed by the Pakistani soldier seen with a rifle. Then the Pakistanis went among the bodies, shooting close up to make sure their victims were dead. This is just one small episode of the Pakistani massacre. The killings were the beginning of a reign of terror by Pakistan, which set off a revolt by the Bengalis and ended in the liberation of Bangladesh. Ron Nesson, NBC News, Dhaka. We came on this boat to go to another place. But after we got here, we heard stories about incredible atrocities from the people, about a place nearby, upstream. The story sounded incredible. Then I remembered talking to a government official the other day. I asked him how many guerrillas, how many Mukti Pahini were in the Dhaka area. He said 3,000. Then he smiled and said, they wouldn't be there for very long. And then we got to that village, and we saw it. The government official had kept his word. The Bengalis here say the government troops came in almost at sunset the night before. They said the people were Makti Bahini, guerrillas, or that they were sympathizers. The burning and killing must have been something terrible. People say the soldiers went wild, that they chose people at random, women, men, babies, shot and ran them through with bayonets, and began burning everything in sight. Seventy-five people died this way, massacred. This child, the bayonet, was run through her. Entire families were wiped out. All the women, the people say, were raped before they were killed, and their husbands and children, before they were killed, were made to watch their mother's degradation. This man was tortured before he was killed. Then his young son was killed. People were burned alive. In the rampage, animals too were shot in the head. To those who survived those two hours, for those who will always remember the screams of women, the moans of their unarmed men, the wails of babies, if they were not Mukti Bahini guerrillas before, they almost certainly will be now. Howard Tuckner. ABC News at a village outside Dhaka, East Pakistan.